The first vehicle in the world capable of tackling aerial targets under all weather conditions was the West German Gepard, which is based on a stretched Leopard 1 chassis. The 830 horsepower engine and general cross-country performance are therefore almost identical, allowing the Gepard to keep up with the tanks and other AFVs it is designed to protect. The core of the weapons system is a pair of fully stabilized and computer controlled 35mm Ehrlichan cannon in a turret with a 360 degree traverse. The guns can elevate to 85 degrees to give total overhead protection and fire at a phenomenal 550 rounds per minute to totally obliterate any target in their sights. The constantly rotating search radar picks out targets at a range of about 10 miles alerting the crew who cut in the tracking radar on the front of the turret and identify friend or foe. In the meanwhile, the search radar carries on completely automatically looking for other potential targets. Once the target is locked in, the onboard computer takes over and fires the guns the moment it is in range, normally three to four thousand yards. If the computer or the tracking radar happen to malfunction, the guns can be fired manually using the search radar or optical sights. Typical of the sophistication in many modern AFVs which would make any normal motorist jealous, the sights have built-in sun visors, demisters, de-icers, washers and wipers. Even though the Gepard has been around since the early 1970s, its combination of firepower, accuracy and mobility ensure a long lease of life despite more recent developments. When the West Germans began development of the Leopard tank back in the 1950s, they realized from wartime experience that armored divisions need backup vehicles capable of operating in the same battlefield environment. The Leopard armored recovery vehicle is just one of the results. With the same basic chassis as the Leopard tank, but lacking a turret, it has a 35-ton winch to haul stranded vehicles out of trouble, including the Leopard itself. A dozer blade for clearing roads and a hydraulic crane with a 20-ton capacity are also fitted. The combat engineer vehicle was developed from the armoured recovery version and carries an auger for drilling holes as well as explosives for demolition work. A third Leopard variant is the Biber bridge layer. Instead of a turret, this carries an aluminium bridge capable of spanning rivers and defiles up to 22 yards wide and taking the weight of all main battle tanks up to 60 tons. The hydraulically operated bridge opens horizontally rather than through an arc, as in earlier bridge layers so the Biber preserves a low profile to help hide it from the enemy. Using the armoured recovery or combat engineer vehicle, the complete power pack of Leopard 1 or 2 can be changed in the field in just 20 minutes. Both the 830 horsepower engine in the Leopard 1 and the 1500 horsepower engine in the Leopard 2 have quick release couplings. The armoured recovery vehicle even carries a spare power pack to save vital time on the battlefield. This family of Leopard variants ensures that the army's mobile forces will not be held up for long. <laughs>